Taking two hounds, they traveled as quickly as possible, only slowing as they came close to their destination and began to hear the screams. Creeping over a low hill, Kern saw his fears, realized a small settlement nested in the crook of the mountain lay decimated. Bodies tossed everywhere, blood, ash, and rubble covering the ground. Monsters wearing scars and weapons shoved into tortured, mutilated flesh. Hacked defenseless farmers and women. One busted a small shed with his fist. The rickety structure collapsed under the single blow. Children screamed, running from the remains of the structure. A woman pulled herself from the rubble and ran after the children, putting herself between them and their attacker. A piece of wood from the broken wall was her only weapon, but she wielded it with all her strength, raising it to block a blow by his battle axe. The axe splintered the wood and dug into her arm. Flinching in pain, but not saying a word, she took the broken wood and stabbed at the man. Kern slid down the hill and ran toward the woman, if only it were that easy. He watched with one eye as she took hit after hit, refusing to back down or abandon the children who cowered behind her. With the other eye, Kern watched for his own safety, fending blows from every raider in his path. He struck out in all directions, cutting tendons and opening arteries to bleed out. There was no time to personally dispatch each opponent. The woman dropped to one knee, her other leg broken by a rebounding blow from the back of the axe. A child cried behind her. The man's attention shifted. The woman saw his axe lift and aim at the child, a small girl, no older than five. With nothing left to do, she threw herself on the girl, determined to take the hit herself. Just as it came within inches of her head, the axe stopped, held in place by the force of Kern's sword. Kern pushed on the axe, throwing the man temporarily off balance. Pressing his advantage, Kern followed through, stabbing his chest and piercing his heart with a single blow. The man staggered back, still in shock at the unexpected resistance and turn of events. He tried to strike again, but his body was already dead. As his brain finally ran out of blood, his eyes closed and his body fell lifeless to the ground. There was no time to celebrate, though. Five more men came up in his place, and they would not be taken by surprise. He heard the children crying. The woman said words of reassurance, quieting their fears and pulling them to her. Her body was all but useless. Still, she used it as a shield, determined not to allow her sacrifices to be in vain. Kern took a centering breath and launched his attack. He hit their weapon arms first, severing the ones he could, disabling all the rest. Blows that would have crippled other warriors caused barely a flinch. Where one arm was gone, they used the other. Kern took a heavy punch to the jaw, followed by a hit in the gut that left him winded. But if they could press on, so could he. Taking advantage of his doubled-over posture, Kern rammed the man closest to him. He didn't expect to move him far, but he did not need to. Once in close, he shoved his short sword up under the man's ribs, going in from the gut. Pulling the blade out at an angle, he stepped back, twisting out of the way for another attacker. He used his smaller size to slip under the man's reach and strike up with his blade. The sword went in just below the chin and pierced all the way through the brain. He pulled the sword and sent it straight behind him into the belly of the next man. Unlike the other two blows, this was not enough to instantly kill the man. He brought his arm down hard on Kern's shoulder, but that was not the worst of it. The man's arm was covered in a series of metal shards, standing out like claws or horns on an animal. The shards ripped into his shoulder and neck. Kern took a step to the side, but the man hit again, leaving a trail of gashes down his arm. Time slowed in that moment. Gathering his center again, he heard the children crying. The woman was silent. Her body was still. He didn't have long if he hoped to save her. It may already be too late. Across the yard, Zandon fought off four large brutes. Blue fire slid down his blade, covering his fists and burning his adversaries. Despite that advantage, the numbers they faced were high. Like Kern, Zandon had taken his fair share of abuse. Kern took another punch to the gut and thought absentmindedly that he ought to worry about saving himself. Pushing that thought to the side, Kern pressed on. They may be fighting monsters, and he did not have the benefit of Syriaxian fire. But that did not mean he would give up.